An older sister defies all odds to find her little brother despite the threat of the final wave of an alien invasion. Will she be able to rescue him before he is sent to certain death? One day, a teenage girl named Cassie finds a convenience store and immediately collects everything she can use and consume. But to her shock, a man suddenly screams for help from the employee's room. Taking precautions, Cassie readies her rifle and carefully steps inside the room. There she sees a weak man pointing a gun in her direction, telling her to put her gun down. Cassie doesn't back down and orders him to lower his gun instead. Although hesitant, the man complies because of his dire situation. However, his other hand is still inside his jacket so Cassie tells him to pull it out. In turn, the man says he's wounded and is only clamping his wound using his hand so he cannot do what she's asking him to. Yet, Cassie insists so the man slowly pulls out his hand, and as soon as she sees something shining inside his jacket, Cassie shoots the man dead. Checking on him, regret shows on her face as she realizes that the man is telling the truth and the thing shown from his jacket is his crucifix. Inside her mind, Cassie comments that if the older knows what she has done right now, the old Cassie will never recognize her at all. A few months back, Cassie was living the life of a normal teenage high school girl. She attended a house party at her best friend's place. She had a crush on a football student athlete in her school named Ben. And lastly, she had happy family. But everything changed when an alien spacecraft suddenly appeared in the sky. For 10 days, the ship remained silent, but the people already gave them a name which is the Others. Despite having no activity, many people started moving out of fear, to the point that only half of the class were attending classes, including Cassie. One day, while she was in class, her best friend, Lisbeth, messaged her that Ben was sitting behind her in her class. Reading this, Cassie giggled and was about to reply when her phone and the power in the school suddenly died. To everyone's horror, even the cars outside lost power, ultimately causing an airplane to crash near the school. As it turned out, the others began to make their moves, starting by releasing electromagnetic pulses that killed every power all over the world. On that day, the parents picked up their kids at school, and that was also the last time that Cassie saw Ben. Yet, it didn't end there because after just a matter of time, a strong earthquake hit the world, which was later followed by flash floods in Sunimus. As expected, many people died because of this catastrophic event. The surviving population, luckily including Cassie and her family, called it the second wave, anticipating that more waves are coming before the aliens come down from their ship and take over the Earth. True enough, a third wave of attack was commenced by the others in the form of a mutated avian flu virus. The aliens made it deadlier than it already was and sped up its spread all over the world. One time, Cassie visited her mother who was a nurse in a medical boot camp. There, she also saw Liz and was about to approach her, but her mother suddenly stopped her because Liz was in quarantine. At that moment, her mother orders Cassie to go home, not wanting her daughter to catch the deadly virus. Unfortunately, that was the last time that Cassie saw her mother and best friend, as her mother died because of the virus while Liz's status was unknown. Because of this, the family finally decided to leave their home, with their father taking Cassie and her younger brother Sam to a refugee camp. As luck would have it for them, good people were running the camp so despite the growing number of refugees Cassie and her family were still accepted. Some time later, her father talked to her in secret, handing her a handgun. At first, Cassie didn't want to accept it, but her father insisted that she needed to carry it at all times to protect her brother whenever the situation required it. Then, just as everything seemed to be going well, squads of soldiers arrived in the refugee camp. Seeing this, the people wondered how they managed to make the vehicles work. At that time, Colonel Vosh introduced himself and stated that they were being rescued and will be taken to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base for protection. Hearing this, everyone cheered and rejoiced in happiness. In that sense, they were ordered to pack up and take all the children to the school bus while the adults were gathered for a briefing. However, Cassie's father insisted that he cannot leave his children's side. In turn, Vosh told him that if that was what he wanted, Cassie and Sam could stay behind just like him and wait for the buses to return. But he also told them that their intel suggested that this place was dangerous and might be attacked by the others anytime soon. Thinking about it, the father told Cassie and Sam to go first, promising that he will meet them at dinner. With that, the two got on the bus but Sam realized that he left his teddy bear in their tent. Because of that, Cassie was forced to go back and look for the teddy bear, only to be left by the bus. Not knowing what to do, she headed to the hall where the soldiers gathered all the adults to look for her father. On the other hand, the tension inside the hall was rising because the adults were worried about their children. Seeing her outside, Cassie's father signaled her not to continue and hide instead. 
At that moment, Vash revealed to everyone why they needed to separate the adult from the children, stating that the fourth wave had already begun. The colonel explained that the others already came down from their ship and infected human hosts, possessing and controlling their bodies like a parasite. According to him, the scanning for children was already developed, but the scanning for adults was much more complicated so they needed to hold them in a separate containment unit for the time being. Hearing this, panic, anxiety, and distrust loomed inside the hall, making the refugees agitated as they claimed that they were not others. Unfortunately, this led to a conflict between the refugees and the soldiers, ending up with every refugee and some military men dying. Witnessing this, Cassie hid in the woods and waited until Vosh and his men left the camp before going back for her father. There she found his corpse and broke down crying. She then picked up the rifle of a fallen soldier and ran away, crying that she wanted her father back. Since then, Cassie lived alone in survival, writing all her feelings in her journal. Her goal was to go to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, desperate to be reunited with her little brother once again. Speaking of her brother, it was then revealed that he and the other kids were taken not to be protected, but to be trained as soldiers to fight the others. Unexpectedly, among them was Ben who turned out to survive all these months and was also on the same bus as Sam. Inside, Ben is greeted and interviewed by Sergeant Resnick. She agitated Ben's anger with the others for her to convince him to join her squad. After that, Resnick injected Ben with a tracker. Just then, she showed him a kid that was strapped in a chair, stating that it was an other. Looking through a special visor, Ben saw the insect-like appearance of the other that was attached to the kid's brain. And with some provocation, Ben killed the kid by pressing a button that fries the kid's head, eventually killing the other. A few days passed and Cassie continued to travel across the state to reach the airbase, learning what she could about the others. One night, she was resting when she heard a noise nearby. Picking up her rifle, she looked for the source of the noise, only to find out that it was an owl. The following day, she ran out of water so she made her way to the main road until she found the convenience store where she killed the man with a crucifix. Filled with conscience, she writes her frustrations down in her journal and then looks at Sam's teddy bear for inspiration to continue fighting. At this time, she decides to settle there and let the night pass. The next morning, she continues on her way, carefully walking through the highway. Unfortunately, she has been spotted and shot in the leg. Acting quickly, she crawls under a car to hide. When the shooting stops, she reaches for her gun and shoots blindly from the direction where the shooter is. However, the pain of her wound causes her to stumble down and she loses consciousness due to blood loss. Thinking that this is the end of her, Cassie apologizes to Sam. At the same time at the airbase, Vosh addresses the recruits, telling them that they are the only hope of humanity against the others. According to him, their intel suggests that the others are starting to prepare for their final attack, the fifth wave. Unfortunately, they don't know what kind of attack it will be so they need to be prepared at all costs. And with that, they all start their training until squads are formed, one of which is led by Ben with Sam as one of his subordinates. About a week later, Cassie wakes up confused in a comfortable bed, not having any idea as to how she got there. Looking at her wound, she sees that it has been cleaned and patched up. Then all of a sudden, a man enters the room so she pretends to be sleeping. Later on, when the sun rises, Cassie tries to stand up but fails. Still, she makes her way to her bag and looks for her gun. Upon realizing that it's not there, she goes back to bed as she also hears that someone is coming. At this time, a man named Avon enters the room, knowing that she's already awake. When he calls her name, Cassie is surprised, but he points out that he knows her name because he sees her driver's license. He then introduces himself, but Cassie is more interested to know where her gun is. But Evan states that he doesn't know where it is. Just then, he notices that her bag is missing and scolds Cassie for recklessly standing up. Pulling the mattress out of the bed, it's revealed that her wound opens up and she's bleeding once again. Acting quickly, Evan takes Cassie to the comfort room to attend to her wound. While doing so, she asks how far is the Wright-Patterson base to their current location to which Evan says that it's about 60 miles far. After stitching her wound, Evan asks why she wants to know how far the military base is. Cassie then tells him that she's looking for her brother. Meanwhile, at the barracks, Ben's subordinates are playing cards while talking about a new cadet that will be joining her squad. According to one of them, this cadet was kicked out of the previous squad because of unruly behavior. But their conversation is interrupted by Resnick, who introduces to them a female cadet called Ringer, the person that they were just talking about. After settling in her bunker, Ringer immediately tells Ben that she will not take orders from him if it means she'll die. Then she notices that the others are looking at her butt, so she threatens to hurt them if they try anything funny on her.
Going back to Cassie, she's currently mapping the best route to the airbase when she notices that Evan is busy outside. Taking this opportunity, she goes into his room only to find her gun hidden in a secret compartment on the wooden floor. Realizing that he lied to her, Cassie quickly packs up and runs away, but Evan catches up to her in no time. Pointing the gun at him, Evan suddenly snatches it away from her and forces her to hide behind a tree. At this time, an alien drone flies nearby while a man with a sniper roams around, looking for them. Going back to the house, Cassie confronts Evan about why he lied to her, to which the man says he had to do it because he's not sure if she's an other or not. Hearing this, Cassie is about to argue, but she realizes that he's right. Instead, she asks if that man from the woods is an other and Evan confirms it. He also adds that the woods are full of others. Hearing this, Cassie gets more determined to get to Sam. But to her surprise, Evan reveals to her that rallying points like the military airbase are high-value targets for the others to infect a human host, implying that Sam might be dead at the moment. However, Cassie believes that her brother is still alive so she wants to head out now and get him. Due to that, Evan decides to go with her. Cassie, on the other hand, doesn't want him to accompany her, but even says she cannot do anything to stop her, not even shoot him as she did to the man with the crucifix. She then realizes that Evan read her journal so she just gets angry with him. Yet, Evan insisted on going, promising that he will do everything to get her to the airbase. The next day, the two set out on their journey to rescue Sam. But the more Cassie and Evan spend time together, the more they fall in love. Settling in an abandoned car in the woods, they give in to their feelings and make love. Meanwhile, Ringer is teaching everyone in her squad to shoot when they're interrupted by Resnick, stating that Vosh wants to talk to Ben. In the command center, Vosh tells Ben that the fifth wave has already begun in the form of the others beginning their invasion attack. Because of that, four squads will be sent to four different areas to eliminate the others before they can commence their attack, and Ben's squad will be one of them. Just then, he hands him a helmet that is calibrated with the other detector visor so they can determine which is an other from a civilian. Before dismissing him, Vosh reminds Ben that his squad is his responsibility, wanting him to bring back everyone safely. Sometime later, Ben's squad is deployed in a city but he leaves San at the base, not wanting the little kid to get hurt. Not long after, they finally detect others using their visor and start attacking them. However, they easily get outnumbered and outgunned so they decide to take cover in a bus. Unfortunately, one of them gets killed and they're now trapped in the bus. With no other option, Ben decided that they needed to retreat to the nearest alley, but it was too risky. Because of that, Ringer rigs the bus to explode and they use this opportunity to run for their lives, hiding in an establishment. There, Ringer calls the mission bullcrap, saying that they can't win against that many others. Just then, she pulls out her tracker, saying that she's going AWL from here on. But to everyone's surprise, it's shown in her visor that Ringer is infected by another. Confused, Ben thinks about it and decides to remove his tracker as well, making it look like that he's an other through the visor. At this time, they realize that Vosh, Resnick, and the military tricked them and made them believe that they're fighting others, when in fact, they're risking their lives fighting their fellow survivors. Ben then put the pieces together, saying that the others want them to finish all the survivors, making them the fifth wave of attack. With that, they all decide to go a though well when Ben remembers that he left Sam at the base. Because of that, he puts his tracker back and orders one of his men to tell Ringer where she can shoot him without hitting any vital organs. Then, he calls for extraction, lying to the team that he's the only survivor from his team. Going back to Cassie and Avon, they're currently resting when they're awakened by the others, who seem to know Evan. Telling Cassie to run, Evan fights them, not noticing she doesn't get far enough so she witnesses how he thrashes the others using his enhanced strength. At this time, she realizes that he's an other the entire time and confronts him about it. Busted, Evan admits that he's an other, also revealing that he was already on Earth before the ship arrived because he was a sleeper other. According to him, he was living a perfect human life before, but when the ship arrived, it was like the sleeping other inside him woke up. But the moment that he saw her, it was like she turned his humanity on once again. As it turns out, it was Evan who made that noise that she thought an owl did. It was also even that took out the other that shot her on the highway. He indeed fell in love with Cassie already, that's why he wants to help her get her brother back. But what scares her more is Evan's revelation that every military person in Wright-Patterson base is an other, meaning her brother and the other kids are being manipulated by the enemy. However, despite sounding sincere, Cassie bears too much hatred for others so she cannot trust Evan anymore. Ordering him to kneel, she tells him not to follow her anymore. 
Then, she runs to the highway and pretends to collapse in front of a bus that then takes her to the base, allowing her to infiltrate them. Finding the right opportunity, Cassie attacks Resnick while she's examining her and takes her down, stealing her uniform so she can walk freely around the base. While this is happening, Ben talks with Vosh at the command center and the colonel knows that Ben is straight up lying to him. At this time, Vosh confirms that every soldier in the base is an other so they win this war. All they need to do is send all the kids to finish the job for them. But to his surprise, he receives a report about Resnick and other soldiers' death, implying that they're under attack. Due to that, Vosh orders one of his men to take Ben outside and put him down. Yet, Ben manages to beat the soldier and get away, eventually bumping into Cassie. Luckily, they hear the announcement that all of the recruits will be transferred via plane so Ben knows where to look for her brother. However, they run into two soldiers that stop them in their tracks. Just then, Evan shows up and takes down the soldiers. Seeing him, Cassie cannot believe that he still follows her despite what she had said to him. But Evan loves her so much that he decides to side with humans instead of the others. Then, he states that he planted bombs all over the base, so he tells Cassie and Ben to find Sam as quickly as possible. And, before he goes, he promises Cassie that he will find her after all this. With that, he goes on his way while the two continue looking for SM. Shortly after, Cassie manages to find her in the crowd of recruits and Ben leads them out of the base. Outside, they witness that Vosh is escaping the base. But before leaving, the chopper fires at them, just in time for the base to start exploding behind them. Fortunately, Ringer shows up driving a truck and takes the three out of the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. The movie ends with Cassie, Sam, Ben, and his squad having their dinner, promising to save the other kids and take back Earth from the others. The Fifth Wave is a pretty decent movie to watch, taking a kind of different route from other alien invasion movies. It also has great pacing that you wouldn't notice that it's almost a two-hour film. But as expected for a film that is derived from a book, not many people are happy about the execution of the film. Yet, if you will just watch it for fun then you will indeed enjoy this movie. Too bad, the promised sequel wasn't continued for this movie. Regardless, The Fifth Wave is a pretty decent film to watch.